All right, so jumped right back in. We're gonna put the Sig 3 P365 uh, back together. If you see my last video, we took it all apart. Um, I did make it into a two-part video just just for YouTube uploading purposes and to make it easier because it took 13 minutes to take it apart with me jabbing um, in between the whole video. So putting it back together takes a little bit longer. So I didn't want to have it one big 30-minute video. Um, if not, I'll leave a link um, down in the description or at the end of this video showing you how to take it apart. Um, so let's just jump right in. This might take a little bit on a couple couple parts and I'll try to get the camera in here as good as I can on some of these videos or some of these uh, sections so first thing I'll start with is the hardest part that I, th I think of doing the gun is putting the sear doop, 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 doop. I mean it's a little spring back back in the gun um, so basically I'll show you the way it sits you got your spring you got your sear and then you have your spring this is what it looks like. And the springs comes off to like a little L or a little J. And if you notice on the bottom of your, this thing is slippery as hell. Um, it's got a little groove it sits in. So it basically goes back in the gun like this. Oh uh, yeah, sliced my thumb open earlier. So it goes back in like that. Your little pin, it's got a head on it, goes through like so. And then if you see right here where the where that where it breaks off, and that's what gives it its tension to push up and down, is where your spring that holds your plunger for your firing pin block is. So it comes back through a hole, so this this will stick down into that hole just a little bit, enough to where you can't push the pin through. So I'll be pushing up with it with a uh a punch and then I'll be shoving this pin through and once I get it through then I don't have to worry about the the plunger for the firing pin block until later on because as long as this is through and realistically once you get it through you can take it back out and it'll probably it'll stay and stay in place um, but now putting this back in is a lot harder easier said than done but it's not that hard once you I figured out the right way of doing it um, so go in kind of like this and then I just, I believe what I did, if I want to remember right, it's been a few days. I stuck my pin in just a little bit. I went ahead and put the spring over the pin. So it's kind of just sitting in there and kept it sideways like that and just pushed the pin through and it kind of put some pressure on it with my finger. And then I set the, the sear down in it. I think that's how I did it. I can't quite remember offhand. So it might take me a couple attempts. That's why the videos take so long because I don't edit them. You know, what What you see me go through is probably what you're going to go through. Unless you're, you know, a lot more experienced with me than me, which is very likely. I've mean, done this for quite a few years, but, you know, there's. I don't know everything. I'm not perfect at doing these, so... Um, I believe what I'll go ahead and do, I think the way I did it last time was I'll go ahead and set it all up, put it right there, and then slide it down in there and take the pin out just a little bit. Slide it down in there and then put some pressure on it just to keep the, the spring in where it's supposed to go. Actually, that worked out perfect. And then just slide it through. So I hope all that was on camera. Make sure it's where it needs to be. Yep, I think it is. Yep, that's in there. So actually I got really lucky on that. And you'll know when you look at it now, I just got to keep this pin from falling out. Um, when you look at it from underneath, <coughs> it'd be hard to see, but the spring, the L of the spring, will be sitting in that groove. If it's flopped down here, then you know it, the, the, the back section of the spring didn't sit in its very small lip that it has to sit on. So, um, And what else you'll notice is just what I was talking about earlier. Right here, I don't know if it shows on the camera, is where that L of the spring is. It is going to have to be put above this, uh, this pin. So what I'll do is I'll come in 
back from the other opposite side with a punch. I'll raise it up and then I'll just kind of all in one motion push it through. Um, it's, it's similar to, you know, lots of other guys to kind of do the same thing. But um, since this, this pin kind of captures this one once you push it all the way through, um, you'll... Uh, I'll go ahead and do it now just so that pin doesn't fall out because I don't want to have to go through all that again. Um, but don't put it all the way in um, because you'll still have the, the, the firing pin block plunger. And when you go to put your, your trigger bar back in, it it kind of captures it too. So it, you, instead of working around it, you just pull it out a little bit, shove the bar down in there, and then you can connect it to the uh, slide lock. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Like I was talking about earlier, let me find my... Punch I used. Where's my sixteenth? That's right. Um, I'll go ahead, stick it through the hole, kind of work it up. You can see me. I can lift up on it just enough. If you get it enough to where you can get that pin in there, and then what I do is I just kind of put it on my mat, get it where, right where it needs to be, put some pressure on it, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down and lift up, and hopefully it slides itself in there. flies so it didn't so i gotta do it again now this might take a couple tries of doing this of lifting it up you just got to get it right in the right spot and, and you got to be quick enough at it to work it in there no nope, i'm not getting it this was one of the harder parts of doing it too and I think I got a smaller punch that I was using last time if anybody else has a better way of doing this let me know because I'll take all the advice we can get I'll push it back out I think I got it that time there we go so now I can push my the pin all the way through so I know it's in there. You can kind of see from the inside where the spring's sitting, but just make sure you're, it's got some resistance there. And then we can leave this kind of where it's at because we'll be messing with it later. Um, uh, from there, let's go ahead now. That was one. I need that. I need you. I don't need you yet. Take that. Take your trigger bars. Trigger. Uh, we don't need the extractors, any other slide parts. We'll take this, go ahead and throw it back in. Um, like I said, it just slides in from here up. Um, and you can go ahead and pretty much complete this back half of it real fast. Um, so you'll do... Let's see. I'll go ahead and put the trigger in first. So the trigger is your next step. So, that'll hold that little booger in there too so it don't keep coming out um, slide it in oh, the trigger bar and trigger set like this so you got a little nut here on the back of the trigger and it obviously goes in the hole so what you want to do is just kind of I think I had it upright like this and then you can kind of just Till it comes in, so it kind of just you can kind of see the motion I went with there, and then this sets like this, and it'll it'll go down into this little little groove in the back. And now to keep it keep it there from popping back out, go ahead and put your spring in. So like I said, with this spring, I don't think it matters which side. It's got a hole in the frame right there. You just slide it through the hole down. And it'll it'll kind of lock itself right here on the on the frame, and then what you just do is get it where it's at, grab it with your fingernail, make sure this is in the right spot, and you just kind of give it a good see it's not in the right place. There we go. Just give it a good pull back and just kind of tuck it into the hole, um, so that now you can see that the Alright. 
Okay. Um, let's see from here. What else we got back here we need to put in? I don't need to go in. Wait, we can save on that. This would be probably the next one. Um, do the slide lock. Just like this. Um, now this is this can be a little tricky too, so what I go went ahead and did is just go ahead and put the slide lock in and get it in its correct orientation so it'll come all the way through because you can't you, if you if you try to go ahead and put this bar in the way it sits, you can't it won't rotate far back enough to be able to pop it through. So go ahead and pull it out, get it in its through its groove. And then you can rotate it enough forward and then just kind of stick it down in there, up in there like that. And then you want to be able to put this back here where it needs to go. And it just slides down in the groove down there. So oh. this, this is for the second difficult part but it's a difficult part that's not that difficult it's just one of those damn times that it just takes a couple holding your tongue right and getting it down in there so just like that oh my god that was easy that was a lot better than the first time um so now if you i'll try to find a pointer show you how everything went it's got a groove it sits in down here on the, fire, the slide lock itself, it comes back and slides itself in right back here. Um, just going to look at it and see and make sure everything's in right because something don't seem right for some reason. I don't know why. Something just doesn't seem right and I always want to make sure while I'm putting it together I check certain functions. And I just pulled it out of the damn track I wanted to keep it in. I'll try to lift that back in there. Something with the trigger bar is not right here. I'm not seeing what I what I've done wrong. You can see it's not it's not engaging or touching the sear at all. So I'm trying to think what I did here. What's different about something? What did I do? What am I missing here? Sorry, something ain't right. No, I, I want to make sure that I get it. Ah. There's a, the, a first mistake that you can make, and I just did it. So now all that work I did with that trigger bar, or the yeah the trigger bar, I'm gonna have to pull this pin back out just a little bit, pull it out, start over on that little process. So not the best assembly demonstration I've ever had, but I'll show you what I did wrong just so hopefully you don't do it. So I forgot to put the trigger pin back in. And it just goes back down in there and kind of kind of wiggle the trigger around. There's my bigger punch. And it'll go all the way down in there. There we go. <laughs> now it's activating the sear, so that's problem solving 101. You gotta <laughs> realize and don't listen to my dumb ass when I tell you to start. I would have noticed it when I noticed what pin I had left, but I did that last time too. I forgot to put the trigger pin back in. Then I went ahead and set the damn um, uh, slide lock bar in. And of course, that's what happened. So. so we'll go ahead and try that again. Hopefully we get as lucky as we did the first time. So put it in there. Bring it up. Slide it back while you're holding it down in there. And then just get it back in its groove. We might have to... And that was passing it. Just kind of go underneath and push it like that. There we go. Oh nope, came out. See, that's where you gotta 
just gonna pull this out just a little bit more. Enough to wear that spring, so put it down in there, bring it all the way out, pull it out just a tear so it's still on the track. You can still see where it's it'll move forward and back. Slide this up into the groove that's on the bottom of the slide lock. So you can bring it down just like that. And then hold on to it so it doesn't come out. And then it pushes back a little bit, bring it back with the slide lock, and it falls into the groove. And now you can, if you want to capture it for now, just kind of push down on that. You'll have to pull it back out anyways here in a second, so there's really no point. Um, from here, you put your plunger back in, which I set down. Somewhere. Oh, there it is. Black on black isn't the best idea. Should make these white. Um, I just have a nice white mat that was perfect for it, but I ended up getting so dirty. Um, where are we at video wise? 16 minutes. We're almost done. Uh, we can make it in under 20. So from here, like I said, you're going to put your plunger back in. And it's. I'm going to look down in that hole and see if this pins in too far yet. I don't want to go too far because I don't want to lose that spring in there. Um, what happens is usually you can see through here and you can see where you're putting your hole, um, pushing this through to line up. But once you put this over it, you block that. So it's it's kind of a, a catch-22. It's easier to get all this put together without putting this on first. But this is pretty easy because it just goes down in just a little bit. You kind of just lift it up, and eventually you'll be able to, you should just be able to hand push it in there. So you might have to pull it out, pull this pin out a little bit, kind of mess with it just a hair. I mean, and there, so boom. it's all the way through. Now, what I've noticed when it came out first, it was just rotate it just a tad like that so it's pushing down on that pin for the sear um yeah everything's working right it's coming up so it would push the firing pin block out of the way um uh, look pretty good so far so now now the last little piece here sorry about that we got kids and wife in there i'll put this down in its hole the, the slide lock bring it up to this point to right, right, pretty much where it's touching the spring. So, I don't know if we can see in there or not. Really can't, but you see what I see. You see the spring, and I've, I've just got this knot right here, barely touching it. So, I'm going to push on it, get it right there. And then from the back side, I'm bringing my tiny. Oh, you got to watch out when you do that because it'll lock itself back in there. So, just a tiny bit. And you'll come from the back side and lift this spring up while you're pushing. It's kind of a... I did it. Got my thumb in the wrong spot. I couldn't put enough pressure on it, so I'll kind of put it up right there. Bring my thumb closer so I can actually apply some pressure. Lift the spring up. I think I got it over. There we go. So you see it captured itself. Nope. And then I lost it again. No, it didn't. It's in there. I just got to get it down in its hole. There we go. So it's kind of lifted up and pushed it. Now it's in its hole. So this is all working. Just got to keep it in there. The, the key here. As long as your spring's in there, you know it's okay. So you just got to keep it. And it's hold. There we go. Just don't mess with it. Um, everything's good. So that's pretty much it. That's the frame. Um, the modularity part that pulls out. Let me make sure. Go through. Make sure we don't have any extra parts. We got your back plate, the pin, extractor, firing pin block, striker. So we don't have any extra parts that go in here. So what we can go ahead and do now. Put it back in the frame. Lift up. I'm just gonna push this forward. I'm just gonna. I always put the back, the front end first, and then just. Snap down, put your pin back through. 
Don't need to punch it in or anything. It just kind of locks itself in. Make sure everything's looking good, working. So frame is now put back together. Let's go ahead and get the slide and we'll be done. Um, I'll start with the extractor so I'm not pounding with a bunch of stuff in my way here. So we'll put the extractor. I'm starting to really wonder if that's something that should be even be in there. I've never seen a, a piece of plastic. I mean, it looks like it's a, a broke piece of plastic that shouldn't be in there, but I've never seen something like that. It's not broke off this. It's, it's rubber, so I'm going to put it back in the spring. It's not going to be able to hurt anything since it's so tight in the extractor. And I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. Um, put that down in there. It's going to... Actually, got to get it over just a hair, so I'll put a little punch down in there. Just kind of go from the front to the back to make sure your make sure your springs in there right. Now, one thing you got to make sure you do is not kink that spring up. It's kind of a dumb move here, but you gotta start capturing that spring quick. So if you have a ball peen or a very small hammer at you and you trust yourself. Um, I don't like doing it from the top with that beautiful finish. So I'd rather put my finger right underneath it kinda. So if I smash something, it's my finger, not the top of the slide. Extractor's good. Go ahead and put your firing pin block back in. Let's make sure where we're at. 22 minutes. So we went over a couple minutes there. So push it down in. Spring towards the extractor side. Just push it down in. Make sure your spring doesn't get all uh, jumbled up. Push down on it. Put your extractor, your firing pin, ah, firing pin in. Keep pushing down on it. And then just from here. Just like a Glock or any other, you want to push down, push firing pin in, firing pin block in wherever it went, push down on it, and just kind of slide this plate in. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to get that lucky to be able to do it with just my fingers. Never are. Usually you get a little bit bigger of a punch before you do this. But... Wow. I'm really having trouble with that. That's kind of crazy. There we go. Wow, this is a little embarrassing. Come on. There we go. That's trying to go up too high. All right, slides back together. Put your barrel. Frame. Oh, I forgot to clean it. Oh, well. So, this back. And she's all good. So that's the disassembly and assembly of the P365 from Sig Sauer, the new game changer 10 plus one that had a whole bunch of problems that still having problems, but, um, I really like the gun. I had, like I said, I haven't got to shoot it yet. So who knows, you know, um, it's, uh, it's a little different of a gun. So it's got a weird trigger on it. You're not used to, you know, I've noticed one thing too, if I, just kind of odd so that's it i hope you guys enjoy the video if you do subscribe um i will be doing a canic tp9 sfx uh disassembly video here in the next uh, hopefully in the next week i was trying to have it done this weekend but i don't want to um i got a lot of stuff going on i don't want to try to jumble it all into one um but yeah so yeah subscribe maybe uh give it a like if you if you, if 
you thought the video was good, leave a comment. If you have anything that I did wrong or that you'd like to see me done differently, or if you got any guns requested that I can pick up that you want to see a disassembly video on, let me know. I'll try to pick one up and do a video for everybody. So um, I'll put the link to the disassembly video right up here in the corner. Um, and we'll see you guys next time on the shooting table.